In this video, I'm going to show you everything you can do with the Google Nest Hub. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you have been around for a little while, you probably know that I'm pretty deep into the Amazon ecosystem. But recently I picked up the Google Nest Hub and I've been really impressed with what it can do. Because of that, I decided to start a new series on Google devices. So if you own any Google Nest devices or anything with Google Assistant built into it, make sure you subscribe because I'm gonna be diving deep into the Google environment, helping you get the most out of these devices. Also, as we go through the list, comment below and let me know which topics you want me to dive deeper into. Now we're gonna be starting this Google series with the Nest Hub, so let's get started. So to start off with the simplest description I have for this, this is a digital display with Google Assistant built into it. If we take a look at the back of the device, we have got a slider on the top for muting the device if you don't want it to listen to you. Now, if you do mute the device, it's going to let you know. The mic's off. And you're gonna see a red light in the top center of the device, letting you know that it is muted. Once you unmute it, it will also give you a verbal that you have unmuted the device. The mic's back on. Over here on the side of the device, we have buttons for volume control. So not only can you adjust the volume with these buttons here, but you can actually also do it from the touch screen. The base has a nice cloth finish with speakers in the back and also in the front under the display. Also in the back here, we have one port for the power cable. Taking a look at the front of the device, we have got a seven inch digital screen. Above that, we have got two far field microphones for picking up your voice. And in between those two microphones, we have an ambient EQ light sensor. If you do have that light sensor turned to auto, it will adjust the brightness of the screen depending on how bright it is in the room. So this seven inch display also doubles as a digital picture frame. By default, it shows the Google Art Gallery. You can also choose between several full screen clocks that are modern and have a really clean look to them. You can also use your personal photos from Google Photos. In the app, you can pick the albums that you wanna see or you can select by familiar faces. Another thing that you can do is that you can also share your photos with other Nest Hubs. So say if you gave this to grandparents, you can upload your photos and it will update on their Nest Hub as long as you're sharing it with them. So in addition to speaking to the Google Assistant, this is also a touchscreen display. So you can scroll through the menus if you wanna do that. So if we scroll from right to left, we can see different suggestions. We've got things like top stories, Pandora suggestions, YouTube suggestions, different recipes, we've got podcasts, and then at the end here, we've got different suggestions, and then also the explore more option. So inside of explore more, you have a ton of different options to look through. You can check the weather, get nutrition facts, check the time, play videos, make phone calls, manage your photos. So if we tap on manage photos here, it's gonna give us some options of things that we can do. Now we can do other things on top of this, but these are just some suggestions to get you started. Now I can say something like, hey Google, show me my Disneyland photos. Showing your photos taken in Disneyland. And these are gonna bring up all the different pictures. I can then swipe through looking at the different pictures I can tap on the grid in the top right corner and that's gonna show me thumbnails of all of these pictures so I can scroll through them quicker and then select the one that I wanna see. And then when I wanna exit, I just need to scroll to the left, scroll to the left again, and then I can just keep scrolling to the left to get all the way back to the home screen. Now, if I swipe to the left one more time, that is going to bring up the clock. Now I can tap in the center of that and that is gonna return me back to my digital picture frame. So with this device, you cannot install apps. Everything you use from this device is streamed from the internet, so it does need to have a Wi-Fi internet connection. So there's no web browser, nothing that you can type in to do any kind of searches. You have to ask the Google Assistant for all of that stuff. Another thing is that this device is not weatherproof, so I would not recommend putting it outdoors. If you have a covered patio or covered barbecue area that you wanna use this to listen to music, I would recommend keeping it covered if you are not using it. So what kind of media can you get on this device? Well, being a Google product, 
YouTube is the one that jumps out to me the most. Now the YouTube experience on this device is gonna be pretty limiting. You can ask the Google Assistant to do a search or load up any specific video on YouTube, but you're not gonna be able to see things like who you're subscribed to, any featured videos, anything like that. If you wanna bring up additional videos, you can tap on the screen and then scroll up from the bottom and that's gonna give you some options of similar videos to that one, but you're not gonna get the full YouTube control and experience. One thing that you can do is that you can cast from your phone that will give you a much better experience. So essentially you are using your cell phone like a remote control for this device. If I wanna load up YouTube on my phone, pull up a video, pull up several videos, even a playlist, I can then cast that to this device and watch it on here. The kids have really enjoyed having a small screen to themselves. So I've been casting shows from Disney Plus and PBS Kids, which currently are not natively supported on the Nest Hub. So what that means is that I can't ask the Google Assistant to play those shows directly on this device. Instead, I have to load up the apps on my phone, pick the program I wanna watch, and then I can cast that program to this device here for the kids to watch. Now, in addition to YouTube, some other native apps that you can stream directly on this device are going to be things like YouTube TV, Sling TV, Hulu, Netflix, HBO Max, and Stars, just to name a few. Now, you can also stream music to this device. Natively built in, you've got options like Pandora, Spotify, YouTube Music, and then also the Google Play Music Store. But in addition to music, you also have options like live radio through iHeartRadio podcasts, and also audiobooks. Speaking of audio, let's dive a little deeper into the audio features. So these Nest devices do support multi-room audio. And essentially what that means is that you can have the same song playing on a bunch of different devices throughout your house to have audio spread out. To do this, you need to create a speaker group in the Google Home app. And that is going to group a bunch of different devices together. So I have one of the devices right here. This is the Home Mini. I can create a group where I'm gonna group this and the Home Mini into one speaker group. So when I request to say, play relaxing music on the Home speaker group, which is gonna include all the speakers in my house, it's going to play some nice relaxing music throughout my house on all the different speakers that I have set up in that group. Now I do have the option of adjusting the volume separately on different devices. So if you don't want one of them as loud as another, you can individually control the volumes manually on those devices. Now, one thing that I was surprised with this device is that I thought the audio was gonna be a lot better considering how big this back section was. I thought it was gonna be much better than this speaker, but I was actually kind of disappointed with the audio that came out of here. Now, you can go into the app and adjust the bass and the treble of this speaker, but it still didn't sound that great. To improve this, however, you can connect an external Bluetooth speaker to this device. So say you've got a big, huge Bluetooth speaker like this guy right here, and you wanna connect it to this to just get some great audio out of it, but use this to control the music, you can do that and get a much better experience doing it that way. So one thing that I loved about this device over the Amazon devices was its ability to control your smart home. So if we take a look at the screen, you can swipe down from the top and that's gonna bring up the smart home menu. Right at the top here, you're gonna get a live update of what is going on in the house, if you have any lights on, what the thermostats are set to. Below that, you have got all of your different options. So we've got lights, routines, media, broadcasts, thermostats, taking a look at cameras, and then also Wi-Fi. If you take a look below that, since this device is in the office group, it has the office lights listed below that that I can easily and quickly just turn them on and off. But if we click on the lights tab, it's going to show all lights that I can turn on and off in my house, or it's gonna have everything grouped by rooms. Let's go ahead and select the office so we can see the office light. I'm gonna slide this lamp out right here so you guys can see when I make changes to this thing. But right now it is at 100%. I'm gonna turn that down. We're gonna set it to look at 49% and this light is gonna dim down. We can also turn the light off, which will completely turn the light off right here. Turn it back on. I'm gonna go ahead and also set it back to 100%. So we can adjust all of that there. And if I had multiple lights in the office, it would do that for all the lights combined. 
if we click on color, it's gonna give us all of these different color options. So not as many options here as you're gonna get natively in the LifeX app, but there are a bunch of options. So we're gonna go with, let's click on magenta. Change the light to magenta. We'll go with lime. Change this one to a lime green but there are some cool options that we have here. So bringing down the smart home options again, we've got routines, media, broadcast, so you can broadcast a message throughout the entire house if you want to. Thermostat, we can control our different thermostats. Go ahead and tap on the downstairs one. So not only can we see and set temperatures, but we can also change modes from this device also. Another thing that we can look at are cameras. So if I click on the Backyard Nest camera, it's gonna load up a live view of that camera on the screen. So in addition to the outdoor security cameras, this thing can also connect to the Google Nest Hello doorbell. So if somebody comes to the door and pushes the doorbell, it is going to automatically bring up a live feed on this device. So you can see if that's somebody that you want to talk to, or you can hit the button, which will give an auto response tell the person to go away or that you'll be right there. Hi there. No one can answer the door right now. We'll be notified you stop by. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Let's go. Don't go here. There are a lot of cool smart home features that you can do with this device, which I will be diving deeper into in future videos. So if that's something that you guys are interested in, don't forget to subscribe so you're notified when those come out. All right, so now that we've talked about smart home, let's talk about some other uses around the house. All right, so let's start off with the kitchen. So probably the biggest selling point with having one of these in the kitchen is being able to look up recipes and also watch cooking videos when you're trying to cook something in the kitchen. As I showed you before, if you scroll from right to left, you can get to a section that has recipes. You can also request recipes if you want to. Hey, Google. Show me recipes for Beef Wellington. Here are some recipes I found. So this is gonna load up all the different recipes for Beef Wellington, where it's from, what star it's rated, and then I can go through the list here and pick the one that I want to use. From there, it's gonna tell me what ingredients I need, how long it's gonna take. You've got options down here at the bottom to start cooking, which is going to actually start the recipe for you and allow you to start doing the step-by-steps. We can add it to our cookbook, add ingredients to our shopping list. So that's a cool one right there. If there's something that you don't have on this list, add it to your shopping list. So that way you can pick it up the next time that you are out. So in addition to recipes and shopping lists, you can also do things like set timers and then also ask for different conversion ratings if you wanna say convert tablespoons into teaspoons. Now another place that we can use this device is the bedroom. Setting this up as a digital picture frame next to your bed is a cool way to get more out of this device. In addition to that, you can also set up custom alarms. You can set an alarm to wake you up to specific music, or you can set an alarm that'll play the standard buzzer. If you wanna check your alarms, you can just ask to display your alarms. It's going to bring up all of the alarms that you have set. Another thing that you can use this device for around the house are phone calls and not just phone calls, but video phone calls. So you can use Google Duo that is set up on somebody else's phone to have a video phone call with them. Now, this device does not have a camera on it. So the person on the other end is not gonna be able to see you, but you can see them. If you don't wanna make a video call at all, you can just take a straight call on this thing and be able to hear the person kind of like a speakerphone. Okay, so now that we have covered all the big topics, I'm just gonna run down the list of everything else that you can do with this device. Starting off with viewing your calendar. So asking to see your calendar, you're gonna be updated on everything that you need to do that day. You can also request to add things to your calendar from this device right here. Another thing you can do is check your reminders. So this is gonna display all of your reminders, and just like with calendars, you can request to add additional reminders from this device right here. Asking for directions is another cool thing you can do on this device. Whether it be you're going to work or going to Disneyland, it's going to give you directions on how to get there, but it's also going to give you live traffic. So it's going to give you a distance and time on how long it's actually going to take to get to that location. Hey Google, show me directions to Disneyland. 
The best way to get to Disneyland Park by car is via I-5 North and will take about 24 minutes in light traffic. 24 minutes away, that is not bad at all. Now the next thing that you can do with this device is order items online. Hey Google, buy laundry detergent. Got it, here are the most popular results for laundry detergent on Google Shopping. So here are all the different options that were brought up. I can select one of them and then add to cart from the device right here. So another thing that you can do on this device that we mentioned earlier was adding things to your shopping list. Hey Google, add pineapple to my shopping list. Okay, pineapple on your list called my shopping list. Anything else? That's it. And we can see that it has added it to my list and we can scroll through the shopping list right there. Another thing that we can do is ask for things like nutritional facts. Hey Google, how many calories are in a Big Mac? There are 563 calories in one 7.6 ounce McDonald's Big Mac. That's a lot. Hey Google, sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday This one my kids love doing happy over and over and over you. again. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> hey Google, how many days till Thanksgiving? November 26, 2020 is in 104 days. Hey Google, give me a sports update. Here's the latest sports news. From NFL in 60 at 8.15 p.m. today. Hold up to the yeah. hold out talk. There are no sports score updates because there are no sports being played right now. It's the middle of COVID. There's nothing going on right now. But I am really hoping that the NFL comes back this season. Otherwise... It's going to be a long winter. Well, let's wrap up this list with a joke. Hey, Google, tell me a joke. Why won't the shrimp share its treasure? Because it's shellfish. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Like I mentioned before, I'm going to be deep diving into the Google ecosystem. So if you are not subscribed, do not forget to do that so you're notified of future videos. Also, comment below and let me know which new thing you learned about this device. If this video is helpful, give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. I want to thank you for joining me in this video today, and I will see you guys in the next one.